Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 29th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Friday, I mentioned that there is a new vulnerability in WebLogic and that several exploits had been released for this vulnerability. It wasn't, however, clear whether or not this vulnerability had been patched before because the original author of the exploits did use an old 2018 CVE number for it. On Friday, Oracle did release an advisory stating that this is indeed a new vulnerability that had not been patched by any prior critical patch update. Oracle did label this vulnerability CVE 2019-2725. On Friday, Oracle did release a patch for WebLogic 10.3.6.0. This patch is what Oracle calls an overlay. There are two versions of this overlay patch. One is for you to apply if you already applied the January patches, or the second one if you have applied the April patches. Now, as I'm recording this, there is no patch for 12.1.3.0 for this version of WebLogic, Oracle has promised a patch for this Monday. So by the time you're listening to it, maybe the patch is already available. And just like for the 10.3.6 version, there should be two patches available. One if you already applied the January update and then one if you applied the April update. So I think at this point, if you're running 12 and uh, you haven't seen the patch yet, at the very least, uh, make sure that you're either running the January or April version that you applied all of those patches. So you're ready to go once the update arrives from Oracle. And of course, uh, if you're running a 10.3.6, then by all means, apply Oracle's patch. I have tested the exploit that was released. It works uh, like a charm. Uh, one of them makes it really trivial to upload a web shell to an affected server. Assume that at this point, your server already has at least been attacked, if not already been compromised. We have seen a couple of crypto coin miners being installed in our honeypot. Really hard to keep the different uh, versions of the different decentralization uh, vulnerabilities uh, apart in web logic. So we're not 100% sure which particular exploit uh, was used uh, for what web shell here. Now, one thing I suggest is if you are finding a web shell or if you are finding a crypto coin miner on a system that's running a vulnerable version of WebLogic, take a real close look. The problem is that in our honeypots, yes, we are seeing some of these random exploits, but uh, given that these exploits are so simple to use and uh, quite reliable and effective, I wouldn't be surprised if some more sophisticated adversaries would start using them in more targeted attacks. I'll publish a diary post shortly after recording this uh, with a couple additional tips and how to spot exploitation in our tests. The only way you would see uh, this exploit being used in your logs is if they're trying to run some command on your server that doesn't work, uh, then you trigger a Java exception. And Docker Hub exposed about 190,000 different usernames and hashed passwords. With that, also GitHub tokens for affected accounts. Now, it looks like Docker Hub uh, was uh, pretty quickly aware of that problem. It invalidated all the GitHub tokens. It also changed or locked the accounts. So you have to change your password if you are affected. The main problem here that may impact you if you were one of those 130,000 accounts is that due to the revoked GitHub tokens, some of the auto build functionality that uh, Docker Hub uses may no longer be working and you have to set up new tokens. 
Affected users should receive an email from Docker Hub. If you are affected, Docker also recommends that you are going through your logs to check that nobody abused any of this information. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. I'm sorry I didn't publish the packet challenge on Friday as promised. Uh, we'll publish it uh, sometime later this week. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.